Whenever the question is about a specific part of a passage, an underlined portion, make sure you are focusing on that portion. It's really important because the traps are going to be about the other parts of the passage. So let's just take a look at how they do that here. So, which describes the underlined portion. Let's go. We got to read everything though. On painter William H. Johnson's return to the United States in 1938, after a decade in Europe, his style underwent an abrupt transformation. Turning away from landscapes painted in an expressionist style, a style that often involves using fluid, distorted shapes, and thick textured brush strokes to express the artist's subjective experience of reality, Johnson began painting portraits of black Americans in a bold new way. Evocative of African sculpture and American and Scandinavian folk art, these portraits feature flat, deliberately oversimplified figures in a vibrant but limited color palette. So just to be clear, as I was reading that, I was really focused on very specific parts of this whole passage and that underlined portion. Specifically, I kind of ignored the middle and was like, okay, turning away from something, right? So that in in indicates a change, right? We did have a transformation mentioned right before that. So that's kind of reiterating that idea. So then we get a long description of his expressionist style, but I don't think that that's the main part of the sentence because that's in those little dashes, right? That's telling us this is an interruption. This is an extra piece of information. The main sentence is getting interrupted. What does the main sentence say? Turning away from landscapes painted in an expressionist style, Johnson began painting portraits of black Americans in a bold new way, right? Main ideas are repeated ideas. They're, they're talking about his transformation, him doing something different. So let's see if there's any answer choice that matches with that. A, it elaborates on the previous sentence's statement about a transitional moment in Johnson's artistic career. I would be pretty sure that that's the answer. Obviously, we need to read everything, but this would be a case where I'd tap that and be like, okay, that's probably it. Let me just make sure by looking at everything else. So B, it provides information about Johnson's travels in support of a claim about his artistic influences, which is advanced in the following sentence. So ignoring the, the, the piece here about like what comes next, let's just focus on what happens in this, this sentence here. It provides information about Johnson's travels. Turn that into a question. What do they say about Johnson's travels? Looking at this sentence, nothing, right? He's, they're, they're talking about his style. That's it. The style is it. And they give us a lot of description about it, but that's all we get. They do talk about his travel right here, right? He returns to the United States after a decade in Europe. That's about travel. So this is why there's some very obvious traps to these questions about the underlying portion is they're going to have answers that are about parts of the passage that are not underlined. So just all you gotta do is stay focused on what they're asking of you and it's really easy to avoid those traps because it's not like it's like subtle here. It, this is very clearly about other parts of the passage, not underlined. You can see the underline very clearly. C, it recounts a moment in Johnson's personal life that enabled the success of his subsequent career, which is summarized in the following sentence. So, okay, what is that moment, right? Again, turn the choice into a question. The moment is what? When he changed his style? That's not really his personal life. That's his artistic life. That's his, that's his career. So I, I don't know. Personal life just does not seem like the right phrase here. That would be like if he got married or had a kid or, you know, something like that. So this just does not seem related to what we're talking about. D presents evidence that calls into question the previous sentence's characterization of Johnson's artistic development. Well, calling something into question is a very negative idea, right? It means you're kind of doubting it in some way. You're maybe saying that it's wrong or it's misleading, but uh, I don't think that that's what's happening here, right? This doesn't seem like a negative sentence. It seems like a positive sentence, right? He's turning away from an expressionist style and began painting in a bold new way. That sounds pretty good. So just dumb summary connotations here, that seems wrong. But more than anything, I think A is just obviously correct. Like we have, uh, you know, I'll write this down. It's such a great way to think about the SAT reading passages. Main ideas are repeated ideas, right? That one sentence has lots of ideas that talk about, or lots of words that talk about the idea of a transition, a transformation. And then we see that exact same word in the choice. And it's okay that we are kind of like, using this kind of end part of the previous sentence to kind of reinforce what's in the underlined portion. That's okay. What's not okay is like if we did something with choice B, where we were only looking at stuff that's outside of the underlined sentence to answer the question, right? It's gotta be in multiple places because it's a story, right? One sentence is gonna flow from the next, so there is gonna be some kind of overlap. But yeah, for these questions, just really stay focused on the underlined portion and you should avoid the, the biggest traps pretty easily.